Good day, my friends. Welcome to another new week. You are on week three, day one of the theme gratitude. And I am grateful for God's safety. Um, it, you know, I, um, I actually uh, have traveled here to uh, Santa Rosa Beach, Florida with my family and we got here safely and um, I also got to see my sister uh, and she was visiting with some friends and um, uh, she had actually not too long ago gotten into an accident and uh, I'm so glad for her safety as well, but I'm glad for God's safety and getting us here. I, again, am in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. I am not on the beach, but I get this really cool area. It's a little pond back here. And um, some other houses um, over there a little bit. So, yeah, it's beautiful out here. It's really hot, really sunny. So... Um, if I start to sweat, um, bear with me. It's, it's quite humid. In fact, I thought it was going to rain. It was thundering just a little bit ago and thought I had to get this in and recorded before the rain came. So, but it looks like it may have surpassed and now the sun's coming back out, which is Florida and it's going to do that. So, um, I am grateful for that. Um, no one was hurt in her, uh, accident. I'm grateful for uh, being here with my family um, and for God's safety. So what are you grateful for? Share your gratitude by commenting below uh, this video, uh, the link for this video, and I would love to know what your gratitude is. So turn with me in your Bibles to six, uh, sorry, John 6, 1 to 15, and we're going to read this together. So John 6, 1 to 15, and I'm going to read it from the NLT. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around, around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Uh, then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with the huge, this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave the thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterwards, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. When Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. I always find this story to be absolutely fascinating. So look at verses seven to nine. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is it? No, what good is that with a huge crowd? So the re responses of both Philip and Andrew, in regards to feeding the 5,000 people, um, it appears that the question Jesus asks 
Philip is to test actually his faith. Andrew, we see looking at what resources they had actually in the crowd. So we see one being tested with his faith and the other one trying to scope out and say, man, do we, do we have enough? Does, is there anyone out there that, that has an extra lunch or, or do we have like um, enough food for everyone? He's like scooping it all out, right? This shows us how man sees versus God. We are limited in what we can see, even when it's right in front of us. They had Jesus right there, and it was a limitation. And I just find that so fascinating. But God knows what he can do with his power. So we tend to put God in this, in this box, in a little box. And we often try to dictate what God will do or can do. But that's not our job. God doesn't call us to do that. We are called to believe and have faith in him. So in your journals and notebooks, write out how you think the disciples should have acted based on their past experiences with Jesus and seeing all that he had done before. I mean, it, it, it's almost, it's, it's really interesting to me just to see this picture. Do we tend to miss things that God has done for us in our lives when faced with immediate trials, when we're going and we see that there's a problem that's about to happen, do we miss the blessing that God is about to do in our lives because we're so caught up in the limitations of ourselves and we put those limitations on God? So think about that. How can you respond to troubles moving forward in the future? How can you invite God in and see what his power can really do versus the limiting belief that we might have in him? So don't forget to put an entry in your gratitude journal. And um, just a reminder that this is something we want to grow into being something consistent that you have a special gratitude journal for every day where you get to see these little blessings that God has in your life every single day. So it also helps us to gain that closer and solid relationship with the Lord. So let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the example of Philip and Andrew. Thank you for continuing to show us where we can improve in our faith. And Lord, we ask that you guide our path and bring us to awareness to all the great things that you do for us through our journaling and, and through our study, through the time that we spend with you, Lord. Help us to gain a closer relationship and a closer awareness of who you are. Walk with us today, Lord and help us to enjoy these blessings that you have given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings.